Well, that's a bit of a different start to a video. <laughs> I haven't ridden a bike in God knows 15 years, it's gotta be. So yeah, Cy Russia have sent me their brand new Bandit folding electric bike. And uh, to say I'm excited to ride it, it would be an understatement. This is gonna be my form of transportation, ladies and gentlemen, over the next few days. So thank you, Cy Russia, for sending it to me. I actually took this, believe it or not, shopping two days ago. <laughs> I pulled up to Aldi on it <laughs> to do some shopping for the family. Hung the shopping bags from the handlebars there. But we've got a mission and a task today. So uh, I'm going to be heading down from my house to my mum's driveway, which is currently where the Grand Scenic is parked and it has been for the last couple of weeks. It's going to be um, bittersweet seeing it again. I mean, obviously this is the sweet part and the bitter part, if you've kept up to date on my community posts and uh, on the latest videos, you'll know what the bitter part is. But while we're on the way there, I thought I'd take the back roads. I've been here a couple of times. It's just around the back of the seven pitches in Shrewsbury along the old canal path and give this bike a proper test out. A couple of quick bits about the bike. I won't go into too much detail, but it's got a 750 watt motor. It goes up 25 kilometers an hour. You've got various different power options here. I just think it looks so cool and futuristic. You've got the power settings. It's on one at the moment, two, three, four, five. I gave it a, a quick test on five before, and um, let's just say I'll probably be sticking away from five for a bit until I get my cycling legs back again. But yeah, dual suspension, folding bike in the middle. What a beast. All right, without further ado, let's get to my mum's and go and check on the car. And as a big thank you to Cy Russia. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested in checking them out. I think as of filming this video right now, this bike, the Bandit, has got 200 quid off. Okay, so a bit more of a lowdown of what actually happened on that last camp at Colmere Lake with Doug and Steve. So, a bit of a run through for those that haven't watched the video. Um, hopefully, most of you have been able to catch up on it and. Uh, see what happened towards the latter end of the video with the car breaking down. So at first, the engine hazard or catastrophic engine hazard or something failure, engine failure stop now, light came up, and um, whatever it's called, um, which obviously got my heart racing because I thought, what on earth is going on here? Anyway, I was able to get to Colmere Lake and park up flat for the night, just so I can spend the night at Colmere with Doug and Steve. It was probably about a mile away from when the first warning light came up on the car. There was no other obvious signs of the car being in distress. It's driving perfectly fine. Temperature gauge on the dashboard was perfectly fine. Couldn't understand why that engine failure light had come up. But I parked up for the night, got my head down, put the heater on in the back. And uh, as you can see behind me, the car seats are now back in and the camping kit's all been removed. Which is quite a sad sight to say the least. So the following day, I called my dad. My dad came to the rescue, came to Colmere Lake just in case I got stranded there. I didn't want to keep the other two guys there. They've got families and work commitments to attend to. So we popped the bonnet and I'll show you what we saw. There we go. And as you can see in the coolant container at the moment, you can see it's all black there. Let's see if I can open it. Basically what we saw in the morning at Colmere or was more or less what's in there now, which is a thick black gravy from where the oil is mixed with the water. Now I've asked two different independent mechanics about what that could be, and both of them have come to conclusion with the dash lights coming on and with the indication of that, that the head gasket's gone. Um, what I did do is a bit of a, a temporary kind of fix. Was I tried to put some rad weld in there, rad weld plus, which can hopefully seal head gaskets if it's not a really serious problem. That's been in there, run the fans on, run the engine for a good half hour to make sure it's nice and hot and circulated through the heater matrix as well. I also then siphoned out all of the old coolant that was like thick gravy in there, took it out, put fresh coolant in with a nice 50-50 antifreeze mix. Um, run the car again, and unfortunately it's come back. In the bag here, I've got one of their latest diagnostic kits. That's it. The Topped On RT Diag 600S. We're gonna plug that in and see if we can uh, get some more information 
on what could be wrong with the car. As far as plans go in regards to the car, I know a few of you left a comment on my community post, obviously when I mentioned everything that had gone wrong with the car, saying about repairing it, how much the repair cost gonna be. Well, I'm still investigating that at the moment. The two mechanics that I've spoken to um, basically you know, don't wanna to touch the car because of how much of a complicated job it is, the high mileage, the age of the car. I mean, it's like a 12, 13 year old car now. It's an 120 something thousand miles. There's battery low there, so I'll, uh, I'll close that for now. And because of the level of work that these mechanics have currently got on their books, they just simply haven't got the time to start rooting deep into the engine bay and see if they can fix it. They said as well, they don't know how much damage has been caused, whether the head needs skimming, I don't know what that term means, but uh, maybe some mechanics <laughs> can leave a comment below and tell me what that means. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, there's there's a number of options really. I can either scrap the car and get scrap price for it, which is going to be like at tops 400 quid, which isn't really a lot of money at all for uh, the car that it is and what it was giving me. Or I can pay to get it repaired and hopefully sell it for a higher price to put towards a van. But while I'm mentioning the van, I wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who has donated on PayPal when I put the community post up. I think as of filming this video right now, we have raised about 250 pounds. So guys, thank you ever, ever so much for supporting me and trying to get me back on the road. I think this might have been the push that I needed to get me to get a van, but I'm not gonna lie. Seeing her go is gonna be a sad day. Just about, just about about running for a bit. Right, that's plugged in, engine's on. Check anti-pollution's come up. Right, we've got a match, okay. Read fault code, that's it, that's what we need. Right, particulate filter restriction, ash accumulation. Let's go at that twice, current and pending. By clicking on that, all ah, right, so it brings up, oh wow, so this is like a little tablet as well. You can read all the codes online. Every code is stored, it means that the powertrain control PCM has detected a level of ash, yeah, okay. Right, we're gonna see if we can clear that fault code. We're gonna have the engine off and key on, so let's put the key in. Let's turn the engine off. Do you want to clear the fault code? Yes. All DTCs have been cleared. Okay. So, if we turn the engine back on, will that come back on? No, it doesn't. Well, that's handy to know. It's cleared the code, but the problem still remains, so, we're gonna to have to investigate it and uh, see if we can dig a little deeper. Big thank you to Top Don for sending me the Arti Diag 600S. I'll leave a link in the description to this as well if you guys are interested in it. Um, they do a multitude of uh, OBD2 readers and um, jump starter kits, and they've helped me out in the past with sending me a few products. You've been good to me. But before we write her off completely, I wanna put a little compilation in here of all of the best memories that we've had, because you guys have come along with me as well, over the past 12 months since I brought the car. It's uh, been an incredible journey. Onwards and upwards to the next chapter of what comes on this channel. Here's the best bits of all the car camping adventures that we've done over the last 12 months. Hey, I found my heart, I found my heart again. You were standing there. You oh yeah. Now we're camping. This is a proper bed now. This is a proper bed. Until you came knocking at my door. It's hard to be. It's hard to be this real. We can play our favorite song. Dance into it all night long. With you I feel. With you I feel something. Do you like your chicken a bit Stuck. 
Cheers, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> he just needed a real man to get in the driver's seat. <laughs> right, follow me. To where my words are true. I've waited a million years before. Oh, is there a few curtain twitches? Oh, there? absolutely. <laughs> I do it all again just to make sure. Yeah, it's hard to be. That's filthy. That is filthy. Hello, mate. You looking for a job? What's the pay like? Well, I can buy you a bag of chips. Okay. Yeah. Thank you ever so much for your That's help. Okay. <laughs> just like that she's gone after some further investigation it became clear that it was uneconomical to keep the car i opted for the cheapest repair sent it to a national dealer and she's somewhere off into the stratosphere not space but uh, at some random auction somewhere being sold it's a sad day it is a sad day but i do have some positive news coming in next week's video. I'm actually gonna be releasing a video on Christmas Eve. I have taken a massive leap of faith for the next chapter on this channel. I um, really don't know uh, if it's gonna be possible, but uh, we'll see what happens. I wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who donated on PayPal, especially at this time of year, to make the next chapter of this channel possible. All will be revealed in next week's video. So I'm gonna leave you here. I hope you enjoyed that compilation of the best bits of the Grand Scenic. It was uh, emotional to watch that during the edit, but good memories nonetheless. I'll see you guys next week.